What's happening, friends? Welcome to Unlocked. We've got another episode of Xbox goodness for you right here at IGN. It is the world's number one Xbox show. Coming up this week, it is a recap and analysis of last week's Game Awards, a fantastic showing. Plenty of new games announced, plenty of Xbox stuff. Microsoft was there in force. Winter of Arcade, we'll talk about that. That is uh, rolling out as we speak. Mortal Kombat 11 being the, the big heavyweight of the show. Plus The Outer Worlds, which is a game that Fallout New Vegas fans are going to want to pay close attention to. We'll talk about that. Dragon Age is back. That was teased. Uh, new Far Cry game, Rage 2 release date, all that and more coming up on this week's show. And a reminder, you can join us for new episodes early here on IGN every Tuesday at 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern, everywhere else, including YouTube and podcast services, Wednesday at 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern. I'm Ryan McCaffrey. Very pleased to be joined by Lucy O'Brien once again, back by popular demand. Oh, it's a pleasure. Oh, it, the pleasure is all ours, believe me. It's honestly like... It I, really is. No, people, you, everybody like, people, loved you last week. Well, no, I mean, I th thank you. <laughs> thank you. It's, it's great to be back. I mean, we are to down two regulars, but mm -hmm. I'm, I'm <laughs> also very happy to be back. <laughs> They're on assignment. We got Destin and yeah. Brandon on assignment. We'll tell you about that uh, when we get back from the new year. Mark Medina, what's happening, sir? Hello. I'm Hi. the same. Like, people are dead, so I get to be on the <laughs> podcast. <laughs> oh. Well, they're, they're, they're dead until I see them again. Wow. Just like everybody. Thank That's a very I, binary way to look. I miss my wife. <laughs> she, sh she should just be right out there. Saying, but is she do dead you, too? Do you guys know that for sure? Does anybody have eyes on her? Wow. This is extremely wow. existential. Man. Wow. I'm going to be in a terrible oh, mood the rest of the podcast. Hey. Okay. <laughs> I got to call her. <laughs> Miranda Sanchez, uh, bring, can you elevate our spirits a little bit after that? What do you got? Bam! <laughs> I gotta carry it on. I'm Never not, mind. I'm not it's all gonna be okay. I'm not as energetic as uh, Dustin. Um, Brandon took a few tries to get there. Yeah, that's all you get from me. All right. But, uh, hello. Well, I want to start, <laughs> but just top of the show, this game near and dear to my heart. I want to wish Doom a happy 25th birthday. Mm -hmm. 25 years ago this week, the original Doom came out. Uh, everybody's got their one, you know, their sort of short list of of games that were just paradigm shifts in their gaming lives. Doom was mm -hmm. that for me. I was uh, NES, Super Nintendo, Genesis, like all the consoles, 8, 16-bit, and then Doom came out. And then we, I convinced my parents we had to get our first PC. Okay, this is like 1993. So, mm -hmm. uh, And then I, that, that game turned me into a PC gamer for like the next decade plus. That wow. game. That game is. It was the first PC game I ever played. Yeah. Like I remember going around to a friend's place, <clears throat> and he had it, and I, you know, I never actually had a PC until much later. Yeah. I think ninety ninety seven. Wait, when did you get a PC? So I guess it was ninety. I got we got our PC in I think it was Christmas ninety four maybe something right. right around there, and the the game came out. Christmas, like December 93. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, you know, I played at friends' houses. I just stuff. played at yeah. friends' houses, yeah. and it was like a very social thing for us at yeah. the time. Do you remember that that screensaver that was on old computers where you it would like walk around the corridors and it would like yes. make turns yes. and stuff, and it would eventually hit something and then flip upside down? I always thought that that was Doom because like I played <laughs> a lot of Doom when I was younger, and then like I would go to school and I'd be like, Oh, Doom that's so computer. sweet and sad. I was a young boy. Doom came out when I was, when did it come out? 93? 90, yeah, was, late 93. I, I was five years old. Wow. Yeah. I was yeah. A, was a, wasn't it's even like, in school yet. It's like when I, uh, they used to give away these like Happy Meal Transformers toys that were like burgers that transformed. <laughs> and I went around telling the everyone dream. at school that I had a Transformer and they were like, that is not a Transformer. <laughs> That is a heavy meal. Wait, so toy. now I just picture this scenario where Lucy thinks I was at the computer being like, I'm playing Doom, guys. Why aren't you moving the mouse? Because the, oh, the game will the game. go away. <laughs> the game will go away. Oh, but man, yeah. Uh, it, Bethesda slash id Software put out a really neat 25th anniversary trailer this week that walks back. So from, from then to now, there's some a little bit of new Doom Eternal footage in it, mm. uh, which actually we're going to talk a little bit about Doom Eternal later in the podcast because. A thing about Rage 2, I think, informs what's going on with Doom Eternal a little bit. So mm -hmm. we'll talk about that. But man, and if you've never played the original Doom, it, it so it holds up. I, th I genuinely think it holds up great and plays super well. Um, it's, it's backwards compatible from Live Arcade, and I'm pretty sure it should still be on the digital storefront. Mm -hmm. It's probably 10 bucks, maybe less. I would really recommend everybody go play it. It is, you know, it, it feels really good on the gamepad because... Uh, I mean, now first-person shooters work on game pads, but also you can't look up and down. 
in Doom. You can only look. Yeah, right. You only have yeah. uh, the X axis, not the Y axis. So it just it feels super fast and fun. And go play it if you haven't played it. And if okay. you like modern graphics, don't forget that Doom 2016 is so good. That as so well. Good. So, good. so good. And it, it, against all odds, that game yeah. turned out great. I remember. Against all odds. Yeah, I remember being a thing. It was like, it could be not good. Remember how, it was I really mean, good. It was in development for like seven years. Yeah. They, they scrapped a, an entire like Call of Duty style version of that. Remember? Like they just threw it out and then they made the game that wins. Well, Doom playing. Three was more like that, right? Like no, a Doom little 3, slower. Doom Three was more survival horror. Survival yeah, horror. that's what I mean, like slower. Like yeah, I guess not Call of Duty, but like. But the original Doom know. Four was was like a Call of Duty type mm. game. A lot of scripted sequences and stuff. And thank God we. Got then they the realized game we did. all anybody wants to do is run around really fast. I wonder if any, has anyone coined the term that like that kind of zen like flow you get when you're playing Doom. You know how like mm. when the music no, yeah. is going really like yeah. it's just yeah. the music it's like the music is influencing the way you're playing yes. the game. Mm. And you're just it's like headshot after headshot. There should be someone who coins that like like Doom flow or like I like that. Ooh. I like that. That's it. Could be you, you see. Okay. You've done I just, it. I just coined it. <laughs> nice. We're done. Um, We're done. We're but it, interesting I feel like Rage 2 is is taking a lot of cues from the light from the it last. It does turn. look like it. Yeah, and it feels like it too. Yeah, which is good. Which is only a good thing. Mm -hmm. Yes, we'll talk more about that. But yes, happy birthday, Doom. Your family is visiting for the holidays and you know everyone is gonna try to get their hands on your Xbox One. Picture it, every single family member is smashing, mashing, and drooling on your controllers. It's just not okay. The only drool that should touch your controllers is your own. There must be a way to avoid it, right? Wrong. No, actually, that's right. There is a solution. Get them all their own controllers. Get your brother the player unknown's battleground controller to battle his way to the final circle. Pick up the Armed Forces 2 controller to appease your dad's camo affections. Get your niece a great blue controller to match her brand new, too cool to hug you personality. That's how you'll make everyone feel special. And that's how you let everyone win. But most importantly, that's how you let yourself win. Here's what you do, whether you're adding to your own collection or trying to protect it, find the perfect gifts for the gamers in your life at microsoftstore.com. And don't forget to check out all the latest and greatest controller designs. And so yeah, Game Awards. We're gonna, yeah. That's basically all we're talking about this week. That's That was the bulk of the news and there was a lot of it. But just before we get into kind of the game by game thing, I, I'm just mm -hmm. curious what you guys thought of the Game Awards this year. It is, you know, it, it has been a... A uh, Herculean effort year after year by Jeff Keighley, uh, you know, industry veteran. I mean, he's got his start in games media, just like we're doing here. And now he's, you know, he's he's just made it his, he basically spends his entire year building the show. I really think he's gotten better and better every year. I thought we got a great show this year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think award shows are fundamentally quite awkward. There were moments where I was like, oh, what is this? Why? <laughs> but I just think that that is the nature of awards shows. You know, it's unscripted. People aren't always going to like say the right thing. And, and, and you know, it, there's a lot of stuff that can go wrong. I, for the most part, I felt like it, I agree with you, Ryan. I thought it was a really good show. I thought it was in great, like a great celebration. It felt yes. really celebratory. I, I felt like the people up there on stage, um, you know, a lot of them delivered just beautiful speeches, like the God of War, like the God of War creators. Yeah, Corey Barlog. Yeah, mm. just like really heartfelt stuff. And it really came across, and it's so nice to see that. It's so nice to see the, the, the faces of the developers not being like, hey, so, you know, not being all like E3 and <laughs> right. stiff-shouldered. You know, very much like thank you and thank you for coming on this journey with us. And and you can really see their humanity, I guess. Mm -hmm. Seeing uh, the, the I, I apologize for... I forget his name, the voice actor for Arthur Morgan, not yes. being Arthur Morgan. Yep. Wait, yeah. well, you're like a normal dude. You're his, not, his, his, accent was, his accent <laughs> was so weird. I was like, what is Whoa. this? Yeah. But then I, I watched his speech again this morning, and yeah, it's like very like, it's one of those things where it's like when you, Rockstar does this on purpose, they purposely get non-famous people, and then they just get, he, he walks up there and he's like now one of the most famous people in video games right now. He's the voice of Arthur Morgan, the Red Dead Redemption. Like it's just you could tell it's weird for him, but that he's like mm -hmm. very happy. I think the Game Awards is really good. Uh, we were all here. I think it's one of those things where two years ago I went to my first Oscar viewing party at Mike Aransky's house. May he rest in peace. And uh, <laughs> He's not actually dead. He just doesn't work here. He anymore. doesn't work at IGN anymore. Um and I, I thought to myself, like, I wish I liked this more, but I just don't. I just don't really care. Uh, and the Game Awards is what I look for, which is all of us just sitting there being excited about things. Uh, my favorite moment was 
it was my favorite. The first half of my favorite moment was when uh, the three executives get on, got on stage together. Yes, like, I thought that was incredible. Yeah, Sean Layden, yeah. uh, Reggie feels and, and, uh, and, and, and Phil, Phil Spencer. Spencer. I was like, this is incredible. And then they started talking, <laughs> and they they did their very industry like they went down the line and you know they all have these like certain ways that they talk like i wish they'd walk <laughs> on stage to why can't we be friends <laughs> why can't we be <laughs> friends I, everybody in my twitter feed did love that at the time except mm. the common thing i that i was seeing in in my in my mentions was uh a lot of people were like Oh, I was hoping they were going to all announce, like, cross play yeah, for that, everything. That would have been the moment. <laughs> That's what I thought it was going to be because my pessimism for this award show is that it's so much more about the announcements than it is the actual awards. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, though it's definitely gotten better year to year as far as the overall production and just the flow of everything, I think this year still had that problem of, like, being too much about... And now we have another announcement to make mm -hmm. about a thing. Debut trailer... Seen it it's, in reverse. It's tough, and I though, get right? it. I get it. But also, it feels like there are some like bigger awards that they're just like, and this also won. Right. Yep. It's just like, yeah. why, why would you? Yeah. Do that, a like, lot a of minute? the smaller awards um, shouldn't have been classified as smaller awards. Yeah. yeah. And I felt like, that they got like best multiplayer game was just like, a, oh, and also ideal. this one. Yeah. This. When they do a lot of like this, this game won best art direction, and then while the person's walking up, they're like, it also won best multiplayer, it also won best uh, sound design, it also won best you're just like, yeah, and I oh, okay. You're, you're pressed for time, and there's a yeah. lot to do, and it's definitely a balance, right? Like, you want to keep everybody engaged, and yeah. like, the way you mm -hmm. get people engaged is by doing those debuts, but at the same time, like, you want to celebrate the people, like, that's a big thing. I think at least for us at the table, we're really excited about, and I would like to mention a big reason that we were all in the office was because we're covering it, so. Yeah. yeah. So, like, yeah. for me, it was kind of weird, because um, since on those shows, I'm usually on the news duty, so like, Lucy was joining me on that, and a lot of times you're not really paying attention to a whole lot of things. Mm -hmm. like once you get a new story, you're just like you're going at it, and you're like you don't really focus. Like I missed a few things here and there. But. It's it's yep. tough for somebody like Jeff though because it's yeah. you know, he's trying to you got to you got to bring people in yeah. with the world premieres, but you mm -hmm. want to respect and honor the industry, so you want to do that. But then you know you also he also gets complaints every year, which I, this was my big complaint last year. I thought last year's show was better than the year before, but still just like way too long and this year it was under three hours he got mm -hmm. but <laughs> Barely. but yeah but it, i guess that meant like okay we got to just rattle off some awards real quick so it's like man just trying to to yeah. find that balance is is an impossible task finding way to cut things yeah, yeah. yeah. one yeah. thing i would like to see them change in the future is their esports awards mm -hmm. um sometimes they'll give it like best esports team mm -hmm. but it's not rewarding a team it's rewarding an organization and that differs so much between every game that has like a big old esport team's like whatever it may be, right? And so like that always feels really odd. Um, those awards are just generally, I think, need to be like a little reworked. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. I have a lot of thoughts on esports. So yeah, uh, I really loved that. That I was almost haunted in the most beautiful way by the that Red Dead Redemption Two music oh, performance. Yeah, that was. I, I wish I I should have thought to write down the woman's the singer's name. Mm. Mm -hmm. Her voice was just like my goodness. I could listen to you for the rest of my life. But also anyone who's finished Red Dead Redemption 2, um, that was incredibly powerful yeah. for me. Like I'm just so glad they included that performance um, because, yeah, it was just a moment of beauty and just reminded me of how beautiful and poignant and horrific that game is. Mm -hmm. I say horrific with love. <laughs> I, I just mean it. No, it, yeah. it, it it emotionally yeah. hurt me. I, I love that when they were doing like best like score or whatever, mm. and they did. It was like this huge rendition. It was like Assassin's Creed Odyssey, and then that was, that was great. And, yeah. and then they yeah. saved Red Dead for the end yeah. because it's like they're all really, really, really good. And then all of a sudden, it's like total tone change because yeah. Red Dead doesn't have music like that. It doesn't have this like these huge Spider-Man epic scores. It just like totally has to change. And it was like it was so good. That's something I'll go back and watch throughout the year because it's really, really cool. Yeah, great stuff. All right, mm. let's talk about the games themselves from the Game Awards. A, a number of world premieres, as we mentioned at the top. Uh, the big one, certainly as far as audience interest, this was not even close on IGN. <laughs> I don't know about the rest of the internet, but on IGN specifically, Mortal Kombat 11. <laughs> uh, Mark Medina. Yeah. That's that was a that was a good trailer, was it not? Yeah, it's it's so funny because we had a, a meeting before the game awards started, uh, just a quick like planning meeting, and and there's a lot of stuff we didn't know, Mortal Kombat being one of them, and uh, 
uh, our wiki's lead, Sam Claiborne, said, uh, this is all great, but just so you guys know, if Mortal Kombat does get announced, that will be the biggest thing. And he was not wrong. <laughs> yeah. And uh, it was such a great um, trailer as well. Like, yeah. I loved the bait and switch. It was so good. It was, it was like, so it's good. It's the best racing game, and then it glitches out into Mortal Kombat trailer. <laughs> yeah, I love that. I want more of that kind of stuff in awards yeah. shows in general. Um, and then he just never even mentions it. He's like, oh, that was weird. Anyway, <laughs> so the <laughs> He never even says anything about it. Yeah, because everyone was like, why is Ed Boon getting on yeah. stage to announce racing and sports? <laughs> anyway, I mean, I thought the trailer was great. Like, it was one of the, it was definitely one of the meatiest trailers in the whole show. Mm -hmm. um, it gave us a lot. Like, check out our rewind if you haven't already, because um, the guys, Mitchell, that, Saltzman. Mitchell did a great yep. job on that. Um, but, like, the two different versions of Scorpion, uh, you know, the additional weapons, and of course, like, a whole bunch of really audience pleasing fatalities. I thought it was great. I'm really excited. Yep. And there's like talk like I I, I don't know how um how truthful it, this is or whether it's going to happen but I there's talk of Pennywise joining the roster. Mm. Um and I'm really That's excited spooky. for that. <laughs> so. Yeah, spooky. they're on a, you know, this wasn't a surprise per se and that we everyone's been expecting mm -hmm. this to get announced so it's just a question of when mm -hmm. I mean that NetherRealm Studios Ed Boon's team it is they are, from everything we know, they are one team, and they've been kind of doing the the Todd Howard Bethesda Game Studios yep. thing of Injustice, of alternating, yep, Injustice yeah. and Mortal Kombat alternating back and forth, which is such a I think is such a smart thing because it probably keeps your development team fresh that they're not just hammering on the same IP mm -hmm. for their entire lives until they they can't take it anymore, and it also. You know, now everybody's fired up for Mortal Kombat because it's been a little while yeah. since yeah. since Mortal Kombat 10. So, uh, yeah, it was really cool to see, and we're gonna have a lot more on this game. It's a really short PR cycle on this. You know, they announced it in December. It's out on April 23rd. That's so. just how I like it. Yep, me too. Announce it coming out Great. soon. Yep, great. It'll, It'll be, be here before you know it. There we go. Uh, so next, this. This one, uh, I think, might have taken the most people by surprise in that uh, like, I actually knew about this ahead of time, I'll confess, but I hadn't seen it. Mm. Actually, like, seeing it and then learning more from Brendan Tyrell, who went down to Obsidian to, to actually get a look at it. This sounds amazing. The Outer Worlds. So mm -hmm. this is Obsidian's new game. Obsidian just purchased, acquired by Microsoft. However, this game is not part of the Microsoft deal. It is. It will be a multi-platform game. It is. Uh, it was under a previous agreement. It is being published by a, a new, quote-unquote, indie label at Take Two Games called Private Division. So yes, it'll be on Xbox. It just won't be exclusively on Xbox. Uh, yeah, it's. It is uh, a first-person role-playing game. Mm -hmm. So if you're a, if you're a Fallout New Vegas fan, Ooh. see if any of this sounds good to you. <laughs> Yeah. It's a first-person role-playing game. It's set in the future. Corporations rule everything, and everything is commoditized. You can have companions in the game. There's a lot of dark humor, kind of uh, the a la the original two Fallouts, not the, the Bethesda-era ones quite as much. Uh, in fact, two of the original Fallout creators, Tim Kaine and Leonard Boyarsky, are uh, leading this project with Obsidian. So uh, this sounds and looks really good. Mm -hmm. I just love the fact that it's got a, a, a dark, satirical message behind it, mm -hmm. especially because, you know, there's been a little bit of chatter around Fallout 76 kind of losing that um, anti-nuclear war stuff that was, infor like, informed the original Fallout games and kind of has just lost that message. Yeah. And I feel like this game really looks like it knows what it wants to say. And I, I love, it looks very funny. Mm -hmm. I also love the idea that you can, I mean, I read Brandon's piece and, and, and you can uh, play in sort of a whole bunch of different ways. And like one of, what, you know, one of the ways that you can play in is like you can just talk your way through things. You don't have to fight. Right. As an idiot too. You can, yeah. be, you can just, you can be stupid. Yeah, yeah. It's great. <laughs> it's, yeah, I just, I, it's got a real, um, what's that movie? Mike Judge. Oh, idi idiocracy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. No, that's what it reminds yes. me of. It's like yeah. it just reminds me of something. It's very familiar. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Playing idiocracy sounds like a good time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. No, I love that movie. No, it's and it's it's hard to look at a game like this and not make like Borderlands comparisons because right. that's kind of what it looks like. Is it's like post-apocalyptic, but it's reestablished and 
you know, just dirty but funny. It's the more of a role playing kind of game, though. The same. Than, than yeah, it, it's you know, whereas Fallout, well, I just mean like art style. Yeah, okay, like, fair like enough. Setting, yeah, like setting. Yeah, for the most it part seems familiar. Then it also super looks like Fallout because then it's like he basically says like we have a vault of people we're running experiments on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, it looks really cool. It almost feels like this is sort of the the spiritual successor to Fallout yeah. New Vegas mm-hmm. that that they have been that uh, Obsidian's been unable to make. Yeah. yeah, a lot of the scenes kind of had like this Western feel. It's like futuristic Western. And I'm like, mm-hmm. I am so on board for this. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, we'll be keeping a very close eye on that game as well. Uh, that I suspect is going to be on everybody's radar here uh, now. Miranda. Hello. Dragon Age. Woo! <laughs> Turns out Bioware... There's two projects in the works, which yeah. we knew. We yeah. knew, of course, Anthem and, and Dragon Age, but we got a teaser for for a new Dragon Age game. Yeah, I'm excited. It was very simple teaser. It was Super very cryptic. Nice. Um, kind of. So it's very cryptic. If you did, if you didn't finish the third DLC of Dragon Age Inquisition, that's so. Which, which is quite a which, few people. Let me, let me, let's I, be honest. I don't yeah. think I did. Okay, so that's that's totally fair. So yeah. this is what I said in our um, kind of breakdown. I sat down with Brandon Tyrell. We, we broke down the lore a little bit in a, another video. Um, so to k- give you the quick version of that, because it does get a little lengthy and, and into it. Um, so Bioware did the Bioware thing where they said, hey, let's put really important lore in our DLC, like they did with Mass Effect. Um, and so in the third game, like there are hints to what the Dreadwolf is. Like obviously the Dreadwolf is like the big part of this trailer and this teaser. And um, the identity of that person is revealed in this third DLC called, I think, Trespasser. Um, so at the end of Inquisition, spoilers if you guys haven't finished it, you probably should. Earmuffs. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> it's been four years. So at the very end, Solus just kind of leaves. And they're like, what happened to Solus? And so in this third DLC, you find out what happened to him, and you find out that he is a dread wolf, which is kind of this elven-like Loki. Like, kind of in that sense of that he's kind of causes mischief. He's a trickster. Um, potentially, yeah, but that also could be misconstrued as he's actually supposed to be a god of, like, rebellion. Right. And so the whole idea was that Solus actually created the veil that kind of separates the two worlds in Dragon Age. And because of that, he he was trying to force out these old elven gods out of power to, like, kind of rebalance things. And whenever he created the veil, it was just so much energy that he just, like, conked out for a very long time and woke up just before Inquisition. That's why he joins your party then. And he's seen that like the elven race has fallen. Like they're just in chaos and it's not good for his people and it's all his fault. And so he has gained this name of like doing all this mischief and he's very powerful. And now his ultimate goal is to go destroy the veil to bring back hopefully the elven people to power. Um, It's kind of what he infers kind of toward the end of the third DLC. And that's bad because the way that he's going about destroying the veil is through red lyrium, which corrupts everything in the world. And it makes people bad, it makes like plants bad, makes things in- inhabitable, like as you saw in Dragon Age, and the bad thing. Um, and so like, it's kind of interesting because in Inquisition, you're trying to close all these rifts, right? But Solus doesn't want that. Like Solus wants to, to tear it apart because in a way, like red lyrium can kind of be seen as something that's trying to push back toward uh, the natural world order because like the veil wasn't supposed to exist. It was created. And so it's like an infection that's trying to cure everything, but it's also destroying everything that was created when that was when that happened. Anyway, so <laughs> um, in that short teaser, uh, you see this like kind of idol in the middle and that has the red lyrium base. So that was actually something from Dragon Age 2 that was destroyed technically by the end of the game. Um, so it kind of poses the idea that there may be a second one or something. Um, so obviously Red Lyrium is a huge thing. Solus is probably the bad guy. The Inquisitor that you played as probably because of how things end. Like your your character is technically dying because of the Inker. And um, it's kind of taking a backseat. It's probably another mentor role. Um, at the very end of the DLC, they're like, hey, Solus knows everything about the Inquisition. He knows everything about our weaknesses, like our tactics. And we need to do something different. So the Inquisitor's like, oh, yeah, let's get some new people. And so that's kind of probably them leading into getting new companions and probably a new protagonist that Solus does not know. Well, now you are ready for Dragon anyway, Age 4. Thank a- you, Miranda. Got all that, yeah, Ryan? Right. Wow. <laughs> wow. Uh, well done. Now, I started laughing halfway through. Just like, I just, I, I just <laughs> wanted to do this really <laughs> funny <laughs> scenario where like, it cuts to like a one and then comes back to us with all beards. <laughs> <laughs> We're anyway, just well, still sitting. So like, this is a story that's been kind of brewing in the background of Dragon Age for a very long time. Like the whole gods and the elven gods yeah. and like the other ones are like kind of the old gods are this mythos has been deep within it. But like I think the really cool thing is that they're gonna go and explore what that means and like were they really gods or just people that were really powerful? And so um 
I think that's what's really exciting. And so if you pay attention to all the deep lore, then you're super rewarded. But if you don't know all that, that's totally fine because you're about to find out more. Yes. And now you do know all that. Now, now you've got it all. Put in a request for Dragon Age in five minutes. <laughs> well, Get we, to work. Uh, okay. <laughs> you know, on, on last week's show, we had, we had sort of sat here and speculated, oh, is it possible that, that Bioware might ship two games next year? And turned out we were quickly, uh, that was quickly dismissed. According to a report... On VentureBeat, sources familiar with Bioware claim that Dragon Age is still in the early stages of development, saying that the studio and EA have yet to decide on a name. Uh, the game was reportedly put in stasis as Bioware had allegedly shelved it momentarily to focus on Anthem. Well, what that tells me is that means they probably scrapped it all and started over at one point, right? Because the Dragon Age team has, to the best of our knowledge, has been working since Inquisition shipped. Maybe. I mean, they had their DLCs, but... Maybe. I don't know. I don't know if they've scrapped things so much as, like, maybe refocused, or because Anthem is such a big project that they're working kind of quietly yeah. in the background, like, maybe a lot of those people were working on that and now have time to, like... Now that Anthem's getting close to coming out, go back to Dragon Age. Because yeah, Inquisition was four years ago. Yeah. So that's maybe. that's a long time if they're st to, for them to still be in the early stages. Yeah, well, but. they had Andromeda in development and Anthem. But Andromeda was over in Montreal. That's true. So that well, was, presumably uh, Anthem's been in development since Dragon Age Inquisition came out. For sure. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's one of those things where it's Easy like teams. that that <laughs> yeah. pause happened three four years ago. Yeah. So in any case, turns out we probably won't be getting Dragon Age anytime soon, which means Xbox Scarlet game. Yay! That'll be fun. Yeah. Okay. Far Cry New Dawn. This uh, this leaky leaked ahead of time. A couple different, a couple different ways. A Ubisoft game leak. I know, right? That Unheard never of. Happens. Far Cry New Dawn. Uh, what I found hilarious about this was that, first of all, I mean, Far Cry Five came out in March. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this is now announced in December. It's out on February fifteenth, yep. and Ubisoft, Ubisoft marketing team saying. Hope you finish Far Cry 5, because, spoiler alert, Far uh, that game ends with nukes going off. And I know it's it's the bad ending. It's yeah, not the only yeah. ending. It's one of the endings, yeah. <laughs> As there it watching is. on video, there it is. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, nukes go off, and this picks up 17 years later. After the nuclear winter, there's now been a super bloom, which if, uh, if you watch the trailer or you're watching us on mm -hmm. video now, you'll see there's, like, all these beautiful pink flowers everywhere. But... Uh, yeah, that is. It, it's. It seems a lot. They're just following the the Far Cry Four, Far yep. Cry Primal strategy. Yep. Of, they're just, just being upfront about this. They never said that Primal was like a reskin of Far Cry Four, which we then figured out pretty much is. Same map. <laughs> yeah, pretty much the same map. They're they're saying nope. This is Hope County. It's just post apocalyptic Hope County. But they they have altered the map in certain ways. There are certain areas that are like buried now, like different, a little bit, a little. Bit of terraforming and, mm -hmm. and sort of different, uh, different geography, but yeah, generally the same map. Some oh, now of the we're same watching characters. the Rage Two trailer. This is cool. <laughs> yeah, it definitely, <laughs> it definitely reminded me of like Rage Two blended with the art, like art style wise. Rage Two plus Trials Rising. Yeah, That's what well, it yeah, reminded I, me of. But I also feel like totally. every sort of post-apocalyptic video game since Mad Max Fury Road came yeah. out is just like, oh, we should make it like Mad Max Fury Road, mm -hmm. right? Um, but this is like this is particularly interesting. I, I like the idea behind this um, this game because. When the box art was leaked, everyone was like, "Oh, you're going to be playing as these two women." I thought so. Mm -hmm. And um, and then it turns out that they're actually they're they're twins and they're the they're the villains. bad guys. Yeah, they're, they're the bad ones. Um, which I which I like. I like the idea of two evil twins, uh, you know, being the the sort of force of evil in this game. Yep. They'll uh, now we need a crossover with that this and the the that Wolfenstein. Oh. Uh, Standalone expansion where you, where you play as the the two twin sisters hunting Nazis. Oh yeah yeah yeah. And then the twin those twins could hunt these twins, and it's just a twin fight. Yeah. And Rand is like, wait I'm a second. A twin. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Why do we have to we're, fight? We're fraternal though, so it's different, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> um, but yeah, actually, I that said, I do actually I do like the art style because to your point, Lucy, it's it's not the same 
just gray and uh, olive green and no, brown. No, no, exactly. People learned that you could make uh, post-apocalyptic worlds colorful. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. that is a thing that can happen, which is good because I'm so bored of the grays that have like dominated the last how many years? I mean, it's not just All even post-apocalyptic yeah. <laughs> games to shooters too. It's like, yeah, man, some some gray games. I mean, mm. we've been shooter fans. We've been complaining about dull color palettes since. Quake one. It definitely gotten <laughs> it's better been, yeah. It's been There's, many years. There are standouts for sure. It's yes. just when you see another one, you're like, no. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Unless you do something with it, don't do it. So we'll have uh we'll have much more on Far Cry. In fact, depending on when you're watching this, might even I might even have a Far Cry New Dawn thing up today. So mm -hmm. take a look at IGN. Uh look at a, a new mission. Well, we just talked about it was a little evocative of Rage 2. We did mm -hmm. see Rage 2 at the Game Awards as well. New trailer. The only real sort of quote unquote news there is it got its release date May 14th for Rage yeah. 2. So that's, we got about six months more to wait on that one. Mm -hmm. uh, did, Lucy, did you, did you play it at E3? Yeah, I, I was at E3. It might have been Gamescom. Um, I have played it. It's, yeah, it's really, it's really fluid. Um, it feels like Doom, but with a wing stick. Uh, I didn't. I haven't uh, done any of the like the driving missions yet, so I don't know how that feels. But for the most part, it's just got that 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 Doom 2016 DNA. Mm. So it feels really good to play. Mm. See, I, I half agree with you. I right. I played it too, and it just it wasn't. Let me make it very clear. I wasn't. I didn't think it was bad at all. Right. But it just it just felt, uninspiring. It did feel a little uninspiring. To right. Me. It, I thought the I thought the the uh, the wing stick the boomerang thing. Didn't do nearly enough damage. Yeah, okay. Like I remember because I remember from I I reviewed Rage One. I I I actually finished Rage One, which I suspect not a lot of people did, because um, it was a flawed game. But uh, that game, yeah, you could just like decapitate people with the wing stick. It was great. And in the E three build, anyway, it was kind of like I throw it. Had to throw it a few times at somebody. It just I don't know. It just felt. It was fine. Yeah, was I mean, fine, I mean, but... it, like Rage is is kind of one of those like middle management games mm. <laughs> where I just sort of feel like it's it's you know it's it it's fine. It occupies a space that is fine. Um, I suppose for me, like I'm just I I do enjoy the fluidity of it, and I like I like the fact that it, I could probably sit down with that game and just like turn off my brain for a little while. True. Um, and that's kind of what I want from Rage. Like I don't want anything more than that. So for those purposes, I was like, look, as long as it feels good, yeah. I'm down. I mean, I think for me, the, the reason I like personally sort of scoff at the at the Doom 2016 comparison is, is yeah. Doom 2016 was so hyper focused on just being an unbelievable, like just brain smashed to the wall kind of shooter. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it you know, there was no open world, there was no there were no vehicles. It was just like Here's a yeah. corridor. The, kill everything. Right. The, the, well, again, it was really confident. It knew what it was. Right. Yes, it knew that's what it. A like, good way to put the, it. The pillars never, obviously, during the the uh, development of that game, never changed. Mm -hmm. Like it really, it really felt so hyper focused. I think Rage is like the kind of like the ginger, you know, stepchild. Like <laughs> it's like got the same parents, but. <laughs> doesn't quite have the same identity and is trying to find out yeah. what it is. Yeah, I think mm. that's fair. I, the, 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 my, favorite, my, fa my favorite description of Doom 2016, and I can take zero credit for this. I saw this. I don't know if it came from Reddit or who it came from. Yeah. But was uh, somebody said, Dark Soul, in Dark Souls, Dark Souls is a game where you are trapped in a room with monsters. Mm -hmm. Doom is a game where monsters are trapped in a room with you. Yeah. <laughs> and I always thought that like it's, that really distilled it nicely. Really it's brilliant. That's a yeah. brilliant analogy. <laughs> it's so yeah. good. Because they are pole opposites as as mm -hmm. games. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. great. I like and, that. A and and I don't like, yeah. It's rage, it's like, I think again, not my problem. It's just part of the reason I'm not completely fired up. Like I will play it when it comes out mm -hmm. and I, I and I hope to love it. But my, that initial E3 hands-on, I just feel like, I feel like I've played Rage 2. I feel like I played it like eight times just at E3 alone last year as right. far as, mm -hmm. like I played, uh, I've played so many third or first person post-apocalyptic games where you scavenge junk to make other junk mm -hmm. and it's open world and you can wander around. And I guess I, I'm still waiting to kind of see what Rage 2's 
actual sort of shtick is. thesis is. Yeah, 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 yeah. What's its thesis statement? Well, it's like nobody expected Wolfenstein um, and its sequel to be so like. I want to swear here, but I'm not going to. Uh, to be so crazy, right? Like yes. it, it, like it, and with its characters, yes. with its world building, story, yeah, with its story, right? Yeah. And it, I really hope that Rage 2 kind of comes through and surprises us in that regard, in a world-building regard. Yeah, it's, that's really hard to show, right? Yeah. You can't mm -hmm. demo, True. here's how great our story is, mm -hmm. unless you have some like crazy introduction that you want to spoil early on. And it, that's not really what they try to do with these demos usually, I, you know? Yeah, yeah. it's just, just yeah. showing off straight up. It's just like, look how like, fun it is yeah. to thing. play. Here's yeah. a sample of, of some of the enemy design and weapons. Yeah, I mean, we're, the scene we're seeing right now is towards the, is, if I, this looks familiar to me, I think the this is this is from the E3 demo, I believe, and this isn't the end of it. But at the end of this demo, the end of this section, it got totally nuts. Where you've got like tons of this overdrive, where you know basically you can, you've got more health, and I think you can you can just kind of really go nuts with it. And those parts to me were super fun. Yeah, if you're watching on video, you're seeing it now. Yeah, this like is a, sped it's, up. It's and, just it turns into a slaughterhouse. Right, and this is fun. Yeah, but my I guess my sort of question that has yet to be answered, again, based off of one single E3 demo, so I'm not passing judgment at all, but what now Now that you're not in Overdrive, now what's this game about? You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like, the Overdrive parts were cool. I think it's the rest of it that has to convince me. So we'll see. I mean, May, May uh, 14th now, that's coming out. And see, I had kind of been hoping that Doom Eternal, a.k.a. Doom 2 Hell on Earth, uh, would would be out around that time because Doom 2016 came out in May, uh, so it's it'll May 2019 is three years, which is a pretty good amount of time. I thought, okay, maybe you know they'll they'll go for that same release window again with Doom. They had a lot of success with it, but that is almost certainly not going to happen with Rage 2 out in May, which tells me, again, just educated guess that Doom Eternal is going to be a Bethesda's big fall 2019 game. So I think we're going to have, we still got about a 10, 11 to 12 month wait <laughs> for oh, Doom yeah. yet to yeah. go. I still feel like they're cannibalizing each other a little bit. Well, I mean, Doom is, it kind of feels like that episode of The Simpsons where Bart and Lisa are playing hockey and it's like, fight for our love because they're such <laughs> similar, like on paper, they're such similar products. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I'm surprised that they're being released in a, in the same year. Even. Yeah, I mean, they'll be, I guess, six months apart. Yeah, though. yeah. Fair. But I, I do see your point, though. It's like, t how, however many major releases Bethesda has next year, two of them will be kind of cousin sh first person yeah. shooters. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, think so. they, I mean, I think they had a choice. It was like, hey, we have Doom that needs to ship and we have Rage that needs to ship. And, and it was kind of one of those things where it's like, well, one of those needs to be, one of those needs to go up against. The fall lineup. Yeah, Good might point. as well yeah. make it the better one. Good yeah. point. <laughs> yeah, not, not, not that I know for sure Doom Eternal will be better, but but Doom has the name, right? Yeah, like, it that, and it's got a it's kick. got it's got a pedigree that Rage doesn't yes. have. Yeah, yes. and so it's kind of like you're, they're gonna throw Rage out right before E3. Yeah. We'll see if it sticks. Rage is not a huge IP, but you know, the games had a lot of previews and cycles yeah. and stuff like that, and so it's and yeah. All right, so we'll keep our eye on both of those games, uh, both Doom Eternal and Rage Two. Uh, now, uh, Winter of Arcade. We were promised it. We got some details. You are Hello. watching. You are watching an Xbox podcast as well. All right, Miranda, just group, guys. go ahead. Kick I've us been, off. I've please. been holding this in like the entire show. It's just like, <laughs> uh, guys, I can't wait to talk about. The floor below. is yours. It happened before the Game Awards, which is better than I could have expected. That they just announced Below is out this Friday. Mm -hmm. I'm so excited. The 14th. I'm yep. so happy. It's still 2018, and it's going to come out. They did it. <sighs> So thank you for everyone who tagged me whenever that announcement came out on Twitter. I really appreciate it. I was so happy. So everyone's like, Miranda, I was like, thank you, I understand. Anyway, that's all I had to it, say. It gets better, though, because yes. uh, you it's going straight into games, uh, pardon me, straight into Game Pass. Mm -hmm. So if you're a Game Pass subscriber, on Friday, just play below. No additional game. purchase yeah. necessary for you, which is just wonderful. Uh, kicking things off, we have Ashen. Out now, mm -hmm. uh, that game, we previewed it. Brendan Graber took a look at it for us at E3. It's been covered before. It looks pretty good. It's sort of a third-person action-adventure, a little... Um I don't know if Soulsy's well, quite. Well, it's the very Dark Souls inspired. Okay. So I helped mm. the edit a review a little bit, which should be up 
No? From the time people Probably, this? yeah. Um, and it's combat and progression takes very heavily from Dark Souls, and it's not really shy about that. Um, there's like a lot of things that are just like one to one, different item does mm. the same thing. But that's okay, right? Like as long as you're doing well and you know, making the most of it, then that's important. And if I'm re- remembering this correctly, is it a two player co op game? Yes. So yes. you have a companion okay. who can be either an NPC or a real person. Excellent. Mm. Um, so that is out now. And then the rest of the Winter of Arcade lineup. So I thought, okay, if we're bringing Summer of Arcade back, which f- for you was Winter of Arcade. Yes, <laughs> that's correct. Now uh, it's still being called Winter of Arcade, even though in New Zealand and Australia it's summer. summer. So that's We're weird. just mostly really confused <laughs> down there. <laughs> I'll but be honest. Why does that Santa have a scarf? It's 100 degrees. <laughs> or no, it's... 40 to de- I have Celsius, no idea how yeah. Celsius works. <laughs> I uh so I thought okay Kangaroos. it's 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 a revival of Summer of Arcade mm-hmm. just at a different time of year. It were they're they're going to highlight and debut and premiere and release like four new games. It'd be one per week for four weeks. It's not working that way. It is instead I mean I'm just going to be honest. I, I'm a little disappointed by what this ultimately is. I mean, I'm happy to see these games out, especially below. Yeah. Don't get me wrong, but it's kind of more of a just a promotion than than an mm-hmm. actual like curated. We've got some choice new games for you. It's just buy so, games that. Yeah, that it's uh, yeah. Monster Boy and the Cursed Kingdom out now. Mutineer Zero, uh, which is in Game Pass out now and that that had already come out on other platforms you're gonna that's that's sort of a running theme here is a lot of these are out on other platforms they're not debuting on xbox Mm -hmm. uh subnautica 1.0 already out ashen we just mentioned that that's also in game pass hello neighbor hide and seek hello neighbor was not a good game i don't know if this one is a kingdom two crowns game pass desert child the aforementioned below and uh Def, it's out, but it's really good. Donut County. Donut yeah. County yeah. is on really good. Platforms. It's cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I think I want to play that on Switch just so I can play that. It seems like a game I just. It's a play. Switch game. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's also on uh, mobile devices too. Yeah. If you yeah. don't, I yes. played it on computer. I mean, like I don't think there's a wrong way to play it. Oh, no, no game, certainly not. The game is like the controls are very simple. Yeah. You move like a, a thing. A few hours long too. So yep. yeah. So that's uh, Donut. The Xbox version out December 18th. It's been out on other platforms. The same thing yep. with some of these other games. So that. Part of it's kind of disappointing. There is an incentive here. So, yeah, you've got some Game Pass games that don't require an additional purchase if you're a Game Pass subscriber. But uh, Winter of Arcade will incentivize those who buy two or more of these games throughout the promotion, much like uh, Microsoft used to do with Summer of Arcade. Uh, those Those who purchase a game from that list that I just read you during Winter of Arcade will receive a $5 gift card for each game purchased after the first one. So starting with the second game. Uh, all the way up to the ninth game you buy for a total possible net of forty dollars if you buy all nine games. Um, but then, I, and then I mentioned the the Game Pass game. So, yeah, it's you know the fact that some of these are out and they're they're not there aren't necessarily a lot of headliners here. Eh, a little bit of a bummer by summer by Microsoft's own Summer of Arcade standards. What it's, was it's in like, the original Summer of Arcade? It was like Braid and that. I don't think that was. I don't think Braid was the first year. The first year, oh boy, that's a really good trivia question that yeah. you're stumping me on. I'm sure it, it li- just kind of reminds me of like going to a store and it's like, oh, you can get a ten dollar Target gift card if you buy all this other stuff, and you're like, but I don't need all of it. Like this right. isn't. It's not really a sale if you're spending however much money to get forty dollars back for a bunch of games that. For the most part, it looks like if you have Game Pass, I mean, you're getting all the yeah, best games. That's all the best. That's the thing. <laughs> you know, if you're interested, and I'm sure there's mm-hmm. some, some cash back. But yeah, you you make a good point, Mark. Most of the the highlights here are in Game Pass. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, it is what it is. Except for Donut County, play it. Definitely play that. Mm-hmm. I, hopefully, Microsoft will. This won't just be a one off. Mm-hmm. They'll do it again. Maybe next summer or maybe next winter. Who knows? And they should take the Steam approach and yeah, winter, summer, winter, summer. I'll take it. Just do some deals. I'll take it. Yeah, we had hoped our sort of uh, internal wish list for this was we knew about Ashen ahead of time, so we thought, okay, Ashen, which looks cool. Below, we'd hoped, and then um, I feel like what was? Oh, we were hoping that. Um, Tunic was going to be one oh, of the right, games, yeah. which was oh, so yeah. good at E3. Yeah. 
I remember Tunic. Yeah, uh, the game with the Zelda, Zelda-like yeah. with the fox and mm-hmm. the cool art style and the great soundtrack. We were hoping that might just stealth be part of this. I feel like there was one other like super cool so game. We Ooblets were, we're waiting for, but we know Ooblets. that seems a little far away. The still. Last Night is is still yeah. high on the list from two E threes ago. These are yeah, games that you just see over and over again at E three, and it's like <laughs> they just exist there. Yeah, yeah. Like I don't believe yeah. they're they're ever going to come out. They just exist at E three. In some cases, but <laughs> anyway, I don't want to like I said I don't want to be too down on this, but again, the. the Microsoft invited the Summer of Arcade comparisons, and by that standard, I'm a little disappointed, but at least you're getting, out of this list of nine games, you're getting some uh, really cool ones, and most of those really good ones are in Game Pass. So that is great. When is Game Pass coming to PC? I know they announced it. I just want it. I I love Game Pass. We'll have to see. I love it. I love it so much. Uh, So speaking of below, Miranda, this next segment's for you. It will be. It will appear seamless to the viewer, but we will we will magically teleport forward in time. Uh, so, Chris Pietrowski came in last week with a build of Below. Uh, it is a PC build, by the way. So this is not running on Xbox, but we're using the Xbox controller. And I just I pitched them on. He was in town, so. And so was Nathan, by the way, but Nathan got stuck on the runway. He like his plane oh. couldn't. He literally couldn't get off the plane. But uh, Chris was kind enough to to come by IGN, and I thought, well, we've done a lot of videos, a lot of gameplay on Below over the years, especially those that early chunk. Yes, uh, so I just thought, well, I'd love to just talk to Chris about like the end of this journey for them and what that's like as a game developer and as a as a creator and as a creative person and just as a human being. I mean, I don't know if I've ever spent five years on one project in my mm-hmm. entire life, mm-hmm. so. Um, I'm, I'm going to throw now, this is a let's play of the, the we skipped the initial big cutscene, so there's kind of skip that story bit, so you can see that for yourself, but just jumping in at the beginning of the game, uh, Chris is playing, and, and it's here's Chris and I talking about, um, about that journey over the, the beginning bits of Below. So if you haven't been keeping up with Below, here's a chance we're giving you <laughs> right now, just watch Below, check it out, and then if you're, uh, if you're interested in the game, Go get it on Game Pass. So uh, we'll finish up the show right after this. uh, I think it's like a 13 or so minute Let's Play. Enjoy it. What's happening, friends? Ryan McCaffrey with IGN. I'm joined by Chris from Capybara Games. He's the creative director. Chris, we're playing below. It's here, (laughs) December 14th. So which, which, depending on when you're hearing this, that may be in the past, and therefore below might be out. It is coming out. I'm so happy. It's uh, it is coming out, and I'm glad. You're very happy. I'm uh, at this very moment just kind of anxious and terrified. <laughs> well, so you know, but and I'm, that's, still, I'm also excited, and uh, yeah, it just you know, we're pre-launch playing, jitters. We're playing the beginning of the game here, or, or cl- very close to the beginning of the game. Yeah. Just past the intro cutscene, you can check that out for yourself by purchasing below. Help give these guys a break. Buy below. It's been one of the most anticipated <laughs> uh, releases on Xbox One for years now, and that's I thought you know. We've done plenty of gameplay videos on Below over the years, but I thought it, it would be great while you're in town here to sit down uh, with the with the background of the game to just talk about like as a human being, like how, how are you how are you doing? Like this has been, I mean, plenty of games. I'm not a game developer, but I've certainly reported on and read about plenty of games that take a long time to develop. Game yeah. making games is very difficult. Uh, you know that better than certainly I do. But the fact that this game has been out in the public eye for five years now, how how has the 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 end of this journey been now as you're about to send the game out into the world? Um, I mean, very stressful. I think anytime you spend a really long time on a, on a, on a project, uh, you know, whether it's a film or yeah anything, um, it just sort of uh, becomes a little bit more personal and sort of seeps into your bones a bit. So. I don't know. I'm feeling a little bit anxious because, yeah, it's just been so such a long uh, uh, development, and it's you know it hasn't been an easy one as well. So um, I want to get into I'm that. I'm feeling a little. A little bit, I'm feeling a little bit nuts, but that's uh, fair. I mean, but, that's uh, fair. but also I'm excited. I'm excited. Uh, you know, sometimes I can sort of like get out of my own head and 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 see see where we're at and uh, and see what we've accomplished and uh, and obviously and also showing it to to you and uh, and other people who you know who haven't lived and breathed this game for for multiple years of their lives 
uh, people can cut. It's nice to see their reactions to it. Yeah. Uh, because then it kind of reminds you, it's like, oh, yeah, somebody is going to play this uh, at some point very soon. And, um, and they're not going to have like a history of yeah, a preconceived of, notion of, of uh, uh, yeah, like tumultuous <laughs> development, uh, you know. Um, uh, so I, I do want to ask you highlighting more the, about, the experience about sort of that part of it, the, the the human you know development cycle side of it. But just for those, for the benefit of of Xbox gamers who who maybe bought an Xbox a lot more recently, or, or you know, of course, it's available on PC as well. We're actually playing off of a PC build right now. Uh, with the Xbox controller plugged in, but just what what is the the elevator pitch version? What is below? Uh, below is a solitary journey through the haunted depths of a forbidden isle, um, and it's also a roguelike. Uh, it has like procedurally generated uh, dungeons, um, but uh, it also kind of uh, bridges that the gap with a with sort of like a Zelda style adventure game. Um, in, in that the, the world isn't completely uh, randomly generated. It has like a certain structure. Yeah. Um, so that's the kind of game that, that, that this is. This is a uh, an adventure game with roguelike elements. Um, uh, you're, you know, you're sort of spelunking your way through a deep dark hole and trying to uh, explore the sort of labyrinthian depths of, of this uh, mysterious island. Um, and, uh, you know, supporting that is a little bit of crafting, a little bit of survival. Um, and uh, and that's that kind of that's the, the the main sort of components of the game, survival roguelike adventure in the sort of classic Zelda sense of the word. Everything about that sounds fantastic. That's like exactly exactly my kind of game, certainly. Um, so what you know if, by roguelike? So that means the game's going to change every time you play. Is that or or be be, be uh, it's going to be laid out differently maybe every time I play. Uh, yeah, it's not a it's not a, a completely uh, randomly generated uh, world. So, for example, um, something like Minecraft is a you know a different seed uh, that's you know everything is completely reconfigured in yeah. in, in a in a whole new way. Um, <clears throat> this game is more akin to something like Spelunky or or Diablo. Okay, where um, the game does have an actual structure to it. Yeah. Um, there's zones that you pass through, um, and the the game world has like a specific flow to it. Um, and so the the, the, wor the levels themselves, uh, you know, the, the the zones that you pass through are always generated after uh, after you die. Um, but the structure of the game remains the same. So you can sort of learn how to play through these caves and uh, and get better at it before you get to the next zone, um, and uh, and sort of get better through play rather than just sort of dealing with a whole new um, experience that is uh, like entirely something you need to figure out. You can you can actually learn the shape of the world huh. um, and uh, and sort of get better at navigating it. Well, the the tone here being set early on, the the atmosphere with the lighting and and the uh, sort of volumetric cloud action fog stuff going on, this very moody game, which I like. Definitely, yeah. Uh, that's thumbs been up that, to the art director. Uh, thanks. That would that's. I mean, the art team I think has been uh, tremendous on this team, uh, on this on this project, and uh, um, I think early on we sort of started off with a very sort of strong uh, idea for the, the art direction that's sort of this small scale zoomed out tilt shift sort of yeah. look um, and uh, and over the years we've just been working on refining this uh, this art style um, and that's one thing that I'm, I'm very very happy with with the results uh, the sort of unique feel and uh, and look of this game I think it's something that it's been sort of a saving grace for us uh, when it comes to our long development yeah and that, you know, technology has changed, and and a lot of things have have uh, <coughs> have in, improved. And you know, you see games in Unreal and in and, and Unity that are just phenomenal looking. Um, but it's, thankfully, the sort of unique art style has kept this game uh, in its own little category. Yeah. Um, so I want to get back to again whoops. just the the human side of this and the and the the conclusion of this of this long development journey. So you mentioned. How it's it's a little refreshing for you to to come in and show it to to people who who haven't been living it every day for the last number of years. Have you guys done a lot of? Do you guys do focus testing along the way to with either even with like friends or family members to try and get those fresh takes on it? So if you're if you're feeling too lost in it yourself, um, yeah, we do we do test we do internal testing we do some external testing as as well. Um, we handle a lot of that stuff ourselves. Uh, we also, you know, put the game through 
uh, through QA and stuff like that. We we uh, we do a lot of that stuff in, in, in house, but we we don't necessarily uh, do like uh, massive focus testing yeah. on it. So um, part of it is that we with with all of our games, we try to go a little bit more specific um, in, in terms of the experience as opposed to going very wide. I think a lot of a lot of games are, are sort of built to capture everybody, but I think there's definitely room <clears throat> uh, in video games to make things that are, you know, somebody out there is going to love it very much. And tuning to something that's a little bit more, has a little bit more unique flavor. Um, Gosh, I'd rather have that 10 times out of 10. I, mean, <laughs> I think that's a that's a better game every single time than something aimed for aimed at everybody. Then you get, you know jack of all trades master of none kind of situation yeah I, I kind of i mean i love i love games that are you know built for all for sure i'm not i'm not actually you know complaining about that or anything like that um it's uh but i do think that it's it's sometimes okay to try to like tune and and develop something that um that kind of stands on its own and maybe appeals to a specific audience yeah like for example like cuphead might be something that uh, like when i look at cuphead i think man that is like something that a very specific audience loves sure and even even from the difficulty perspective but even the art style everything about it is sort of like made very confidently to be a very specific thing yes um and the the end results for that is that it captured its audience um because they sort of delivered on that very specific dream <laughs> so that's got to make you when, when, when a game like cuphead sells a couple million copies then or, or maybe more at this point that's got to make you guys feel good as you're continuing this, right? Like, if you feel like that you share those at least sort of philosophies with Cuphead, that maybe that that you'll you guys will be able to find a, a similar level of success by by connecting with people in that similar kind of way. Um, I never I never really kind of assume that kind of stuff, but it does it does make me feel a little bit more confident just yeah. like pursuing that path and you know looking at certain examples of games that um, that. Uh, that are successful not because like they're successful specifically because they're not for everybody exactly <laughs> exactly and i think i i mean i hope below is for everybody i hope everybody is as bummed out as i am and enjoys this atmosphere um but uh look at that fog that is cool so uh, we, but but yeah i think it's also okay if if some people are uh you know if it's not if, for them if, if it's not necessarily <laughs> whoops <laughs> So as we take a look at just a couple more minutes here, uh, so we don't want to give away everything. I mean, I guess that there, this is a, there's a lot to do in this game, I imagine. I mean, we're, we're, we're like 10 minutes in, 15 minutes in, but this is not going to be like a two hours and you're done kind of game, is it? Oh, no, this is by far the biggest game that we've made. Um, I think it's a very long game. Um, the game world is quite extensive. Um, I think the first playthrough is going to be... Um, uh, quite challenging and uh, and and I think time consuming. Uh, not time consuming, but taking. Uh, I think it's a good length game. Yeah. Um, like it's. It, I would. I would put it in in the realm of like uh, of Diablo one. Uh, right. Maybe. Oh, I like that. Um, Speaking my language. Where you know it's it's not the biggest game in the world, but it it. Uh, you won't finish it overnight either. No, you won't be finishing it overnight. Yeah. Although who knows? You know, like. <laughs> I'm sure the people who made Dark Souls didn't expect <laughs> some some guy to beat it in 45 minutes that's while true. while naked. <laughs> you know, like that's yeah. that's not what they planned for. So right. I'm sure there's going to be runs of this game that um, surprise us. Um, but uh, but yeah, I think it's a hefty it's a hefty game for sure. All right, so Xbox One, PC, and uh, it is out. December 14th, which, when you're watching this, might be now. Go give it a look. The team at Cappy has worked many years refining this. I mean, I guess that would be my last question for you, Chris, would be, has has the uh, sort of focus or, or uh, design thesis of this evolved in any significant way? Has it, has it really changed a lot over the years, or has it really just been about taking the time to hone in the original vision? Uh, it's 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 a combination of both. The the original vision has never really changed. Yeah. Um, so most of the time that we've spent in this game has been uh, just trying to arrive at that uh, at that concept. Um, but all this all the ideas um, 
that we have in the game right now have existed for quite a long time. And so a lot of it has been just um, refinements and, and, uh, and iteration. And, you know, sometimes and I, we have the idea, but it you know, we bark up the wrong tree for, uh, uh, you know, multiple iterations yeah. before we, we get the right version of that right idea. So I would say that the game has a lot of the same components that it started with, but um, over the years we've, we've, uh, we've just, you know, uh, spent a lot of time focusing on the details of the art style and this and the uh, uh, the mechanics and um, yeah. And here we go. Well, I'll, it's, let me it be... stayed similar, but it's also evolved quite a bit and uh, and has changed. Uh, and there's been also changes in the narrative and things like that as well. Awesome. Well, let me be one of the first to say congratulations to you guys because it's. Thank you. I don't know if I've ever worked for five continuous years on on any one project before. I mean, it's. It's a heck of an undertaking, and uh, from everything I've seen, which is far beyond just what I've seen here, I've, you know, I've been keeping an eye on it over the years myself. You guys have a lot to be proud of, and I, I can't wait to sit down and play it myself. So uh, do check it out on Xbox One or PC. Uh, look for a full review of Below on IGN very soon. Again, possibly now, depending on when you're, you're seeing this video. Keep an eye out for that. Uh, Chris, thank you so much. My and pleasure. Uh, I hope you're able to... Fine. You deserve a nice vacation now after finishing this one off. Oh, yeah. I, I'm, I think there's a sabbatical on the way for me. Well um. deserved. <laughs> uh, for more on all things below, more on all things Xbox, more on all things video games, keep it tuned right here to IGN. Thanks. All right. If you're listening on the audio version of Unlocked, as I know many of you do, I would seriously encourage you to go check out the video version this week and fast forward to about the 45 minute mark to see that that video. Sweet. Yeah, your 45-minute mark. Yeah, that's what they call me. <laughs> <laughs> Delivers I don't great know, I don't content know what in, in 45 minutes or less, or it's free. Wow. Right? Okay. Well, <laughs> it's, all, it's all free. <laughs> that's right. This website is free. It is. Anyway, yeah, please go, uh, if you're listening on audio, check out the, the video version when you get a second, because that was a, a really fun Let's Play with, with Chris. And take a look at below. Give it a chance. So let's do trivia real quick. This is a fitting question. It comes to us. Chuck from Erie, Pennsylvania, his gamer tag, Booty Box. I'll let you make of that what you will. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, it's like, oh, <laughs> nice gamer tag. He, uh, Chuck asks, can anyone guess the starting vault in Fallout New Vegas? This is fitting because, of course, we, were, we talked a lot about Obsidian and their new game, Outer Worlds, mm -hmm. and their you know, probably most beloved game, which was Fallout New Vegas. So, uh, Mark, with a knowing grin on his face. <laughs> I've been on the show a number of times. Yeah. I've never been 100% sure about the trivia question. Yep. Then you put the easiest trivia question <laughs> on here yeah. ever. All Does right. anybody not know this? I think we all know it. All okay. right. So, uh, guess the starting vault in New Vegas. Was it Vault 101, 117, 111, or you don't start in a vault? Miranda? It's D. <clears throat> Lucy, it's do you D. agree? It's yeah. D. It is D. Mark. Oh, let me think here. Oh, yeah. You definitely don't start you in a don't vault start in, in the New vaults. Vegas. That is yeah. correct. You stand there, you're looking at Matthew Perry, who plays the uh, guy in the striped suit from Friends fame, and he shoots you, and then you wake up in a house. I think that there this is. is the first trivia question I've answered on this show. Oh. And I'm so happy it they're, was so easy. They're always, <laughs> they're always not... this easy. Oh, I wish. No, they're not. Uh, See, normally next... it's from the famed 1997 NHL game. There was a Easter egg from Just Cause that wasn't even invented yet. What is, <laughs> what is, no, I don't know. Yeah, well, this Chuck easy, from Erie, <laughs> Pennsylvania, a.k.a. Booty Box, Thank you for Thanks, lifting, the, Box. Thank you, lifting the spirits of the panel here. Christmas miracle. <laughs> it's a Christmas miracle. Uh, the trophy for the year's trivia prize has already been awarded to Brandon Tyrell. Mm -hmm. he's, he's secured it. but uh, this I was, didn't make it. This one was just for fun. We'll start fresh uh, when we get back at the beginning of 2019. If you would like to uh, take a shot at stumping the panel, though, send your Xbox trivia question. And if I don't use it in the next couple weeks... Guess what? I'll use it when we get back. So send those good Xbox trivia questions in to the email address unlocked at IGN.com. I need four multiple choice answers. Please note the correct one in your email. Time to roll. Uh, Mark, what are you working on? What it is you, lunchtime. What do you want to plug? Uh, sure. You can follow me on Twitter at Mark underscore Medina. Um, right now, the new Call of Duty update just came out. And so this is my platform to talk about. It. It's really cool. There's a new vehicle. 
zero is amazing. Uh, but they just they're taking the Fortnite approach where they change the map for Blackout. It's all like fall, even though nice. fall's That's over good. in like two weeks. Um, new vehicles, new weapons, all that good stuff. Uh, I also want to talk about. I don't think you guys will ever talk about it on the show. Uh, Hades is on the Epic Games oh, yeah. Store launched uh, during the Game Awards. PC game, so that's why I haven't talked about. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> and that's the really good game. It's is that free? No, no, oh, it's it is twenty dollars okay. on the Epic Game it's Store. Got it. Early access right now. Yeah. Um, but if you it's, buy it now, you'll have it, of course, whenever it's out. It's kind of like Dead Cells. It's in the sense of like, not even the roguelike comparison, but it is a roguelike. Uh, the fact that it's like it's early access, you can pay for it, and then probably a year from now it'll come out. Probably for more money. So if you're paying, Maybe. if you pay Maybe. now, you might end up with a deal. Also, the Epic Game Store is kind of cool. So yeah, you can have a game on it. Uh, but yeah, Hades is really, really fun. Check out Tom Mark's piece on the Epic Game Store. While yeah, you're, really yeah, while you're around, yeah. like honestly, yeah. it's a great breakdown of of how it's a challenge at Steam. Journey's on there. Nice. Oh, you, Journey for oh, PC. Right. Yeah, Love Journey it. for PC. It was Good weird. Stuff. Great game. Um, oh yeah. So speaking of. Uh, we were talking about something, but that reminded me of Sounds like me. Game of the Year nominations are yeah. up yep. on IGN.com. Go take a look and see what our nominees are. We have 10 nominees mm -hmm. for Game of the Year. I know what I voted for. You all know what you're voting for. Yep. We'll, we do uh, know. We'll reveal that later, but the nominees are up. Go yell at us in the comments. I can tell you Forza Horizon 4 is yep. absolutely nominated, as it should be. Yep. So take a look at that. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at DMC underscore Ryan. Lucy? Uh, find me uh, on Twitter at Luce O'Brien, L-U-C-E-O-B-R-I-E-N. And on Instagram, uh, the same the same handle. Mm -hmm. And it. also check out every feature that's going up on IGN right now because I've, I've, been, <laughs> I've been here for a week. And uh, <laughs> you know things are. I feel like I'm I'm getting the hang of this of this uh, this things whole are thing. cooking. So things are cooking. Nice, love it. Miranda, take us home. Yeah, so you can find me at Havoc Rose and it's Havoc with a K on Twitter, Instagram, pretty much everywhere else. Um, best of stuff. So I worked on our anime categories, as you would probably assume, because that's what I do here. In addition to games. Um, and that's kind of been my big thing. We're also doing a lot of wiki projects, so if you need some game help over the holidays or whatever breaks you're taking, vacation, and you're playing games, please come to us and let us know if we don't find something that you need because you can tweet us at IGN Wikis um, if you have direct questions. Fantastic. Is there only one more episode left of the year? For the year? Uh, there might be, actually. I think Maybe. that might be it. Hang on. What day? So next, next, next week, a lot of week would yeah. be the next year. Next 19th. week's it. One more show for you in 2018. Although this is a great birdie time tells year. me I think we might actually be recording another one, so it might Ooh. be two. Noise <laughs> might be two. So we'll see. We'll see. It's definitely no two promises. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks everybody. We'll see you next week. Bye.